So today we're going to be building a tool that I have needed and wanted for a very, very long time. Commonly known as the shaving horse. Um, I think a, an older term is draw bench or drawing bench. And it is a, a, a kind of clamp for clamping wood pieces while you work them with a draw knife. That's basically all it's for. But that is something that uh, comes in handy a lot. And I'm going to be really, really glad when I finally have a shaving horse and don't have to clamp pieces of wood in the vise. Um, that doesn't, that doesn't work very well, but that's, that's what I have to do every time I want to make a tool handle or anything like that. So, so today is woodworking with my friend Ryan and my friends Drew and Roy. So I have, I have these two books. Uh, one is The Woodwright's Shop. These are both old copies with Roy Underhill. And a lot of people will recognize, recognize Roy. And um, he has a section in here on building a shaving horse. And Country Woodcraft by Drew Langsner is another favorite book of mine. I've actually never built a shaving horse before. And uh, so these books together are going to be um, basically our textbooks for, for this project. So this log has been sitting on the ground for probably a year. So it's still wet, but it's not really technically still green. And... Uh, I don't think it's really too far gone to use for this project. I hope it's not. It really was a nice log to begin with, and so I hate seeing it become just firewood. This is a, a nice white oak log, really straight grained. And uh, the first thing to do is to split it in half. And I look, I always look for any cracks that are already in the end of the log. This log had a little bit of a crack right here, so I'm trying to align this split with that crack. And we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna start this, this wedge may or may not start well. If it doesn't, I'll get a smaller one. So I'm gonna kinda score along that line that I marked with the fro. If I didn't do this, if I started to drive a wedge in here, the crack might wander off in, in a, another direction and not go straight across. It's starting. It's also trying to wander a little bit right there. So now we're just going to, to leapfrog these wedges down the crack. So move, put a wedge in as far up the crack as you can reach, okay. as far up as you can get it started. You start it with this hammer. See, I, I can see it right there. Yeah. And then just drive them in, drive them in with the maul. I would just drive one at this point. Drive the one in front. Yep, just keep, keep driving it. It's not a perfect split. It's not a perfect split because it wandered a little bit, but totally fine for what we're doing. There is an old story I don't know if it's true or not. There's an old story about some some settlers in the I don't remember if it was Kentucky or the, or Virginia when during the Revolutionary War period when some of the Indians went on the war path and um, dude was out splitting a big log for rails for his rail fence and these Indians came up all painted up and everything on the warpath and they they said uh they informed him that they were going to kill him and he's like well I said all right i guess i'll i'll die like a man but i'd really really like to split this log this log been fighting this log all morning i'd really like to get it split before i die and uh 
he, he asked them to grab a hold of the split to help him pull it apart and all four of them did and he knocked the wedge out and their hands were stuck fast. <laughs> All right, it'll come open now. Perfect. We've got a little bit of a twist, which isn't really a problem, and Roy Underhill in his book says, don't even worry about the twist, but I would like to straighten the twist out if at all possible. So most of the wedges I have are just simple felling wedges designed to go into a, a chainsaw cut when dropping a tree, felling a tree. And for starting into a log like this, they don't work very well. The edges are fairly thick, as you can see, and as you try to drive them in, they kind of pop back out. This, this is a starter wedge that I forged, and you can see how thin the edge is and that will make it stick really well and not bounce out while I'm starting the, the, the split. So this is a very unscientific physics lesson, because I am not a physicist nor a scientist. Um, I guess I'm an experimental scientist of sorts. <laughs> so I don't understand the physics of all this. I'm just going to explain it the way I understand it. The larger the mass of the struck tool, the more energy is soaked up or dissipates in the tool. So the heavier the wedge is in relation to the hammer that's used, the more energy is lost in the, in the wedge. And um, another, another aspect of this is on all struck tools, when you're using metal hammers on metal wedges or metal struck tools, you'll get mushrooming. Mm -hmm. And it's my theory that all things, all, all else e being equal, all, th all other things being equal, you get less mushrooming with a lighter wedge and a heavier hammer because this, uh, the mass of the wedge acts as an anvil basically for the mushrooming. The mushrooming is happening because the metal's soft and the, that's where the force, the most energy is being dissipated or, or uh, expended in the end. And, and then the, the amount of energy that makes it through to a given point is less and less down the length of the wedge. So basically what we are doing is making a board without a saw. That's not what I wanted. It also may be shallow. So after flipping this over and looking at the split that I tried to correct, I have come to the conclusion this is just not going to work. It is, uh, we're going to have to scrap this as our main bench plank, but it'll work fine for some of the other parts we need. So all is not lost, but we're going to go to this other piece, the outside slab that we split off, and we're just going to go ahead and flatten it the way it is, and then uh, hew the sap, 
sap wood off and um, make that our main bench. So. So, I'm scoring, and I'm not very good at this, but I'm scoring across the grain because then it's much easier to break big chunks out. I need to do this more often. Seems like a pretty good workout. It's like that, uh, that quote in the book, holes, if you take a bad boy, you make him dig holes in the hot sun all day, he turns into a good boy. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> take a bad boy, make him swing abs all day, he turns into a good boy. Man, he made this look so easy. <laughs> I felt, I've, I've, I've been feeling bad because I feel like I am an absolutely horrible person to try to introduce you to the joys of hand tools. <laughs> hey, someone's got to do it. <laughs> Unfortunately. My favorite real clean joke is, uh, so a three-legged dog walks into the bar and says, I'm looking for the guy that shot my paw. <laughs> <laughs> See, like, once again, mine are always a little less clean. So, uh, drunk goes into a bar, walks up to the bar to order a drink. He's just slobbering drunk. And the bartender says, says, no, sir, I'm not serving you. You're drunk enough. You need to go home and go to bed. And the guy's like, I'm not drunk. <laughs> and so they argue about it for a little while. And, and then the bartender says, he says, all right. He says, if you're, if you're so sober, said, what's that coming through the front door? The guy squints, kind of looks. He's like, oh, that's a one-eyed cat. He said, you're drunk. Go home. That cat was going out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Good one. I have to remember that. That's really not bad at all. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a finishing pass. Okay. And call it good. All right. Now just stand there and hold it, Ryan. Okay. And you're just gonna throw the axe. I'll yeah. Just hold it just like this. Yep. So I want to take off most of this rotten sapwood because. I can't, while I can't prove this, um, maybe somebody else will be able to tell me, but um, I'm convinced that the wood will last longer if that rot is cut off. The heartwood will last longer. So if the plank comes out twisted, this is what he says to do. Basically, you make, you make the riser, which is the piece that angles upward uh -huh. here, out of the, other, the matching piece. Yeah. And basically, it levels out in the middle of the bench. Okay. Which if it's split, if that piece is made out of the piece that you split off of this piece, the twist will match pretty well already. But we've got a nice flat bench now. And I'm working on the on the riser right now. So in the interest of time and the fact that I don't have a good crosscut saw sharpened yet, that's that's coming. Um, and in the interest of my sore muscles, I'm going to use this modern infernal machine to cut these next few parts to length. So we're gonna cut a 20 inch piece. Actually, we're gonna make it a little longer for Ryan's sake. 22 inch piece for legs. All right, 
So now we have to split that into legs. There we go. And now I want to lean this. And one of the ways that I've done this, because this auger is almost the same length as the leg's going to be, I try to imagine where do I want the foot yeah. to wind up. And then I'll look at the end of the auger and imagine it as the leg. But we want it to splay outwards this way for stability side to side on the bench. And we also want it to splay this way, long ways with yeah. the bench. And that, res that makes it resist racking. That helps yeah. the, you know, uh, as far as racking end to end. That looks like a lot of angle, but I promise you it won't when, when the leg goes in. So I got into this project because a few days ago, another friend of mine, Daniel, came over and uh, we impromptu just launched right into building ourselves each a draw bench. And so here we are, right in the middle of three draw benches. So I made it round, and now I'm taking just a little extra off of two opposing sides to make it oval. So now we're going to eyeball that up just a hair. So we made good progress today and we got our bench almost legged up. We'll probably go ahead and finish getting the next, the last two legs in it. And then the next stage, which I suppose will be in part two, is to build the working parts of the draw bench which basically consists of a foot operated clamp so that you can hold pieces that you're shaving with the draw knife. How cometh it? Good. Is this oak? White oak. White oak. And white oak is basically just the wonder wood. Maybe maybe next only to American chestnut, which is mostly extinct. Yeah. Actually, even sets kind of level. Okay, now, all right. Seat yourself. We're wanting this this plane to be even with the underside of your forearms. That seems pretty pretty right on. Let's try this. A little too extreme. I think that'll be about right once we get the so. seats made, because we've got to we got to hack this end out um, at a little bit of an angle. Now, let's see, let's turn it like this. This would probably be better done with a chisel, but. All 
All right. Surely that'll be good enough. Cool. We can hope. All right, have a seat, see what you think. You're normally gonna be seated. I mean, it looks like it's gonna be about right. Maybe a little low? You, what, what this is, is like whatever you're working on, whatever you're working on is gonna be clamped to this surface. Okay. So that your knife is gonna be on top of that. Oh yeah, that seems, that seems perfect. Cool. All right, so we need a piece of material about four inches tall. Beautiful. Okay, next thing is to make the dumb head. Now this one, it appears to be getting off track. So what I'm gonna do, definitely don't wanna use that. Come on. Let's do this. Hopefully the damage isn't too far. Looks like, looks like some kind of freaky totem pole or something. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of like a giant's toenail. Travis, do you need to go get some warmer clothes on? Hmm? Yeah. Mortising the bench. I imagine it's gonna hang more like that. I'm, I'm gonna plan on this being almost vertical mm -hmm. when it's just hanging. Yeah. And then all the way closed, it's gonna be back there. So many people would get really uh, uptight with a measuring tape, and I do quite often, but if I don't have to use a measuring tape, I don't want to.
kind of crazy how thick these. Yeah, they're over a sixteenth thick. Yeah, that's that's all. That is that is set by the lead screw. The screw on the end that draws it in. The pitch of those threads determines how fast it cuts. Cool. But you definitely want to be doing this sort of thing in green wood, if at all possible. That's pretty awesome. Slice Can you imagine, there. used to be that every barn and house was built this way? Put together a big mortise about, and tenon joints. I was just thinking about Noah's Ark. Yeah. How there's no, like, you think about how every house used to be built with these tools, and you think about what he built the Ark with. I bet he would have killed for a corner chisel. <laughs> Maybe he had him. Maybe he did, yeah. I'm not going to go all the way through because I need to flip it over so that we don't get a bunch of dastardly tear out again. Sweet. I'm making the pegs out of dry material so that they will never loosen because the bench is made out of green material. This is material that's been drying for a few years. Um, they will only get tighter in the bench as the green wood shrinks around them. Hey, Marion, what's Mama doing? Um, I think she's working on the computer nursing a baby, I think. Could you go ask her to make us some hot chocolate when she's not too busy? Well, she, we were going to keep it a secret, but she's, she was already working on it. Awesome. <laughs> That's sweet. Alrighty then. And now we're going to Place this on top and get it where I want it. And then I'm going to drive it down. Just like that. Now watch. When I pull it off, now I have a mark for my hole. Nice. It's pretty clever. Pull that nail out. Remember which of those two holes. And now we will just bore this down in there. Look at there, you're getting the hang of it. Nice. All right, let me, let me finish. Oh, sorry. Fine. Oh! <laughs> oh! Well. Oh, See, that's because one of us, probably me, one of us didn't get our whole plum. Plum? Yeah, so the peg, see that? See, it's tilted up. Oh, uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Is it gonna come out? Oh my goodness. Woo, that worked really well. Um, <laughs> Do you want me to give me twist the club. And give me the club. It was me. It was me. All right, so we're coming back to our project. A couple of weeks later, it's a lot greener out there. Ryan's not here this time. 
we're going to go ahead and finish his bench anyway, and then he can help me finish mine. So I've replaced this block that split on us. Hopefully we won't split it today with the, the last peg that has to go in it. And I've um, chopped the seats, cut the seats on each end of the riser here. One to go over the block and the other to sit on the end of the bench here. And it took a little tweaking to get it to where it would sit flat without rocking. And um, now we are ready to peg the riser in place. I'll grab my brace and bit. I think I'll peg this end first. All right, we're all the way through. I made these pegs slightly oval so that they will they'll push lengthwise on the grain, but they won't hopefully won't spread the grain this way causing the board to split. So that's the theory anyhow. Come on. I don't like how that's feeling. My peg may be too tight. We shall see. Why is it? Why are we wobbly now? There we go. I'm going to go ahead and peg the top here so that it will stay put whilst I do that last peg down there. This is only going to get one peg. I think that's all that's necessary. And this is the one that I hope does not split. least fat of these. All right, that's pretty solid. So by putting these pegs in at opposing angles, that basically locks the two pieces together where they don't want to like come apart vertically. They can't really. Whereas if they just both went in straight, it would be possible for the joint to loosen. Although I don't think it's likely. These pegs are really dry and tight fitting. And as this continues to dry out, it'll only shrink tighter on the pegs. I cut too much off. <laughs> I, mean, I don't think it, I don't think it's too much, but I didn't account for something.
It's all they is and ain't no more. Start about right there. We'll go 18 inches. 18 inches and four inches past. We can get away with four inches past the tenon. All right, we have a fully functional shave horse draw bench. So this appliance is most commonly known nowadays as a shaving horse or shave horse. But in 18th century literature, it's more commonly referred to as a draw bench. And this is a draw knife or drawing knife because you draw it towards yourself. Is that all by hand, Dad? Well, we used some power tools here and there. We used a chainsaw to cut the most of the bigger pieces of wood. Is that hand saw? Mm-hmm. 